Welcome to our All Saints by the Sea virtual worship Sunday service. We are celebrating the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm the Reverend Vicki Moradian and I'm delighted you could be with us. At the end of your bulletin you will find um, notes about uh, ministries at All Saints. You will find information regarding um, adult Christian education and children and family ministries. So please consult that. If you haven't already downloaded your bulletin, I suggest you do that now before our worship continues. As always, we are grateful to those at All Saints um, who continually support us with their stewardship and commitment, especially in this time of COVID-19. We appreciate all that you do for us and it helps us to continue reaching out to you. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving Spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Genesis. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. 
Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go, unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please, tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed from Peniel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart, summon me by night. Melt me down, you will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise up against them. But at my vindication I shall see your face. When I lie awake I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they looked up and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We'll get ready. This week's reading from Genesis betrays one of the most popular lies of our culture. We've all been told it, and even more painful, we've each told it to ourselves. Moreover, even though we know it's false, we still sometimes whisper it to ourselves, hoping it might be true. I suppose our attachment to this particular lie is understandable. As most of us learned it from our parents, it goes like this, sticks and stones will break my bones. But words, but names, will never hurt us. As most of us have learned over the years, of course, names do hurt. Whether they are names we've been called by others, or those we have called ourselves, names hurt a lot. 
You know what I mean. Names that exaggerate our inadequacies or herald our failures. Names that expose our weaknesses or pay tribute to bad decisions. We wear these names on our backs like a snail does its shell, dragging them with us into each new episode, encounter, or chapter of our lives. This is what Jacob runs into at the bridge at the River Jabbok. His hopes and fears, his dreams and nightmares, his past, present, and future all tied up in his name. It's a strange story, make no mistake. If it sounds familiar, it's because many of its elements probably are a bridge over troubled water, the dark night of the soul, monsters that assail in the dark of night, only to grow weaker with the rise of the sun. From the three billy goats gruff to the kings of, to the knights of the round table, we're used to these kind of mythical elements depicting turning points in the lives of heroes. Except that up until now, Jacob hasn't been much of a hero. In fact, he's pretty much been an unrelenting scoundrel, swindling both his brother for his birthright and then cheating him of his blessing. Jacob fled his home to the backdrop of his brother's howls of grief, betrayal, and anger. And then for the next 15 or so years, Jacob went head to head with his equally devious uncle Laban, squabbling and double dealing over everything from wives to livestock. Don't you love that comparison? Until he is once again on the run, this time bringing with him his family, his servants, and all the wealth he can carry. Which is where today's reading picks up. As just verses before those appointed for today, Jacob receives about the worst news he can imagine. Esau, his brother, is coming to meet him with an army of 400 men. Readers who have followed Jacob's stories may quietly re rejoice, anticipating what probably seems like his overdue and proper comeuppance. But Jacob is terrified. True to his nature, Jacob sends ahead of him gifts to bribe his brother's favor. And then he sends his wives and children, perhaps hoping that even if his brother can't be bribed, he will at least take pity on him. With everyone across the river safely, Jacob paces its muddy banks, contemplating his dicey future. And then it happens. He is set upon by, by what must have seemed like a demon. And they struggle all night until as the sun comes up and the creature's strength ebbs, it reaches out and dislocates Jacob's hip. And then Jacob knows he is in the presence of something supernatural. And so he asks for a blessing. It's at this point that the story takes what to modern ears may seem a strange twist as Jacob's opponent demands to know Jacob's name before he will bless him. But names in the ancient world were never simply names, rather they were descriptors, telltales, indicators of one's very character as Jacob's name literally heel is no exception for he was the one grasping at his twin brother's heel as they were born. 
and he has been grasping ever since. Living from his wits and cunning, trusting no one and proving himself untrustworthy. So when the demon who turns out to be the Lord demands that Jacob confess, confess his ill-gotten gains and his checkered past, confess his fears and his failures, his shifty arrangements and dubious social interactions and business dealings. He is asking Jacob to die. For nothing is more terrifying to the cheat and scoundrel than having to come clean, to tell the truth, to fess up. Once Jacob does, however, an extraordinary thing happens. The Lord refuses to accept Jacob's confession as the end of the story. He refuses to allow that Jacob's name is all there is to him. Indeed, the Lord gives Jacob a new name, Israel, the one who wrestled with God and humans and prevailed. That is what the name Israel means. It is an act of generosity and grace as Jacob has wrestled but hardly prevailed. And yet with his new name, Jacob enters into a new future and passes his name, his faith, and that future on to his descendants who bear that name even unto this very day. Yes, it is a strange story, but I find in it a profound corollary to parts of our own stories when we, too, gathered by water, were given a new name. At baptism, you see, that is just what happens. We are given through water and the Spirit a new identity and the name of Christ. At baptism, we are given the name of Christ and God's promise to regard us always as Christ. The challenge and opportunity before us is to ask ourselves to confess to confess those names we have been called and call ourselves, the names that haunt us at night and pursue us during the day. We are called to come clean about our fears and our failures, our setbacks and our disappointments, our resentments and our regrets. We are called to confess so that we might hear God's response. No, this is not the whole story. You are more than you can believe. In fact, to me, you are Christ, God whispers to us. How many of us can even imagine, let alone believe, that in baptism you have God's promise to regard and treat you always as God's own beloved child? And your neighbor has the same promise from God. That is what we are. That is who we are. We are God's own beloved child. 
And so after we have died in our confessing, we are raised to new life as God names us anew and calls us to life and love and abundance and grace. Names do hurt, sometimes very much, but they can also heal and help and raise us to new life. So let us tell the truth about who and what we are so that God can announce a second truth bigger and more expansive and far more gracious than we'd imagined, a second truth that creates an open future and girds us with hope and courage to embrace it, a second truth that whatever other names we may have collected over the years, our primary name is Christian. Let us go from this worship today to be that, to live out the full name given to us at baptism, Christ. Amen. Joining with Christians throughout the world today and throughout the centuries, let us affirm the faith of the Church, saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and, and earth, earth, of all, of all that, that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Christ the only, only Son, of, Son God, of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God, God from God, God light, light from light, light, true God from true God, God begotten, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophet prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 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 Because we have been fed and called, and our lives joined forever in Christ, we unite our voices in prayer, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the wisdom to know the difference between the word of God and our own words, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the world, for all nations, for each country's leaders and people, that peace and cooperation will be our common goal, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church, that it may be a faithful witness, and that maintaining unity in the bond of peace we may know what it means to have one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all people in need, that each person's hunger may be satisfied, each person's pain relieved, especially Timothy, Barbara, Catherine, the Thomas family, Nancy, Deanna, George, Lee, and Roy, Betty, 
Judy and Dick, Christina, Terry, Joanna, Alex and the DeHaan family, Diane, Sandra, Jill, Jerry, Cynthia, Peggy, Alan and the Morgan family, Blake and Sandy, Steve, Martin, Fred, John, Vicki, Carolyn and the Henderson family, Stuart, Joyce, Jim, Sally, Roger, Alex, and Selena, Cal and family, and for ourselves, for those on our minds and in our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who are facing the coronavirus, for all who mourn their dead, all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, for those who are homeschooling, those who fear the present and the future, we pray for physicians, nurses, and home health aides medical researchers, teachers, those who keep food on our tables, and all those working on the front lines for the common good. Fill the aching in our hearts with your merciful power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our own community and families, that we may know God's presence and embody God's love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, lost in the darkness, we search for light. Surrounded by our created wastes, we seek a promised land. Threatened by war, we break the bonds that make for peace. Help us to find our light, our land, and our peace in you, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. While we are not able to receive Holy Communion together, we can celebrate a spiritual communion. A spiritual communion is a devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion at that very moment, but in which circumstances impede them from actually receiving Holy Communion. Let us pray together. O Lamb of God, in union with the faithful gathered throughout your church, and remembering particularly our own church community, our hearts long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessing, blessings given me. Blessed Savior, I love you above all things, and I earnestly desire to receive you into my soul. And although I cannot receive you in bread and wine, I remember and trust your words. This is my body, this is my blood, given for you. I invite you into my heart spiritually, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And now as our Savior <clears throat> Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy, kingdom will, come, be thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, the power, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Forever and ever. Amen. We love you all. And now let us pray together. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in our hearts in the fullness of your strength. Be our wisdom and guide us in right pathways. Conform our lives and actions to the image of your holiness and the power of your gracious might. Overcome every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom and keep us strong in faith, hope, and love until we can meet at your table again. Who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, with compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. May God, Creator, Christ, and Spirit, bless you to be Christ's body this day and forevermore. Amen. The peace of the Lord always be with you and also with you. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. Join the great throng, Sotary organ and song, sounding in glad Life and breath come now with praises before. 